Hi everyone, Dr. Sylvestre here. In this video, I'm discussing managing very geriatric patients with Dr. Brock. Dr. Brock is a board certified anesthesiologist, so you're getting both an anesthesiologist and a surgeon's perspective on some of these mega geriatric patients that present to us. Nancy. <laughs> Tell me, have you had any um, interesting cases lately, you know, maybe anesthesia speaking or any otherwise that uh, you would like to share with us? I always love a good, a good story. Good story. Yeah. Um, there is one uh, recent case that I had that uh, I'm quite proud of uh, in terms of outcome, but also in terms of just how everything came together and the reason I like to tell this story is because it, in, in the telling of the story, I can describe to you how I apply all the principles that we've all learned in terms of um, anesthesia, effective and safe anesthesia. So the patient in question is a 20 year old cat. And of course your, your eyes get big and you think 20 years old. And why are we going there? Um, so it, it starts out with making sure that this 20 year old cat doesn't have any hidden problems that um, might uh, cause anesthesia to create, you know, to create new problems. Think of anesthesia as being uh, a treadmill test. Yeah. And so when you're looking at this 20 year old cat, the question is, will the cat be able to pass the treadmill test? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I rely a lot on discussing things with clients it's not that I don't rely on blood work, but you all know how cats are. And that's why I thought I would talk about this cat because cats are, are, are um, good at hiding their symptoms. And, and the question is, is this patient a good candidate for anesthesia? How, how can I tell? And I understand that people want to do blood work. And yes, this 20 year old cat had blood work from a few weeks ago. Um, we had a, a, an interaction with the client whereby we could ascertain that the cat's behavior at home was normal behavior. And then also crucial information was, was the cat's weight steady? Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of tracking weight loss in cats as an indication as to whether or not there's a, a hidden problem or one that requires us to um, come back around to uh, reevaluating our, our, our patients uh, as a candidate for anesthesia. So that being said, all the boxes were checked. A lot of time was spent talking with the client. And this cat, when she had her anesthesia at 20 years of age, came to the hospital with gabapentin on board. So age is not a contraindication to dealing with the anxious cat. As a matter of fact, when you think about it, at 20 years of age, this cat has had multiple visits to the veterinarian and remembers every single one of them. <laughs> That's a so we want to kind of dull the cat's memory about yeah. those prior experiences. And so um, this 20 year old cat receives 20 milligrams per kilogram of gabapentin, arrives at the hospital calm, stays with the owner until we're ready to give more pre-med. Um, we physically examine the cat and we determine that the pre-med was with the gabapentin was so lovely that all we had to do was give a little bit of intramuscular uh, butorphanol. And that was the full extent of the pre-medication that would not have worked if we had not given the gabapentin at home. The two, the two go together. And so IV catheter is placed. Um, the patient uh, is rendered unconscious with alfaxalone, but honestly, when it comes time to induce anesthesia, I like people to use whatever they're comfortable with because it's a brief period where you're rendering the patient unconscious and then those drugs are going to be gone. So they're not as big a part of the anesthesia decision-making as somebody might think. And then this patient is intubated as I do for all my patients, receives oxygen and inhalant anesthesia at a, an amount that gives me a quiet patient. I didn't mention at the beginning that it was a dental procedure. So, it, and a dentist, dental procedures in 20 year old cats are, are undertaken because there's oral pain 
and there's quality of life, right? That you're trying to address. It's not cosmetic. It's not elective. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have done an elective procedure in a 20 year old just because you had a lipoma and it's rump or something like that. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That this oral pain is, is going to affect the, the cat's quality of life. So, but, but in terms of the overall attention to detail, this cat received oral dental nerve blocks. Right. To the extent that when we recovered this 20 year old cat, we were not chasing pain. The only other analgesic I had on board for this cat was a little bit of ketamine throughout the procedure. The dental nerve blocks consisted of bupivacaine mixed with buprenorphine. And I took the cat through to extubation with only those analgesics on board. We followed up with meloxicam. There was no pure mu opioid agonist administered at any time, nor was it required. And and how long did the procedure last in, in this case, in this particular cat? Dentals, mm, I know. An hour, an hour and a half. An yes. hour and a half. So a decent length of anesthesia. This wasn't a, a short 20-minute procedure. It was uh, it was decent, but, you know, fortunately not a yeah. really long. But, wow. It wasn't a marathon. And the cat did well. And the cat did The well. cat did really well. And so the definition of doing well for me yes. in a 20-year-old cat is that the cat is looking for food before it even goes home from the hospital. And, and I know that's setting the dental. bar a bit high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The best time to offer them food is when their mouth is still frozen because they don't uh, care. <laughs> that makes sense. By now they're pretty hungry, especially this yeah, cat right. probably hadn't eaten in months, right? Or had a real well, meal. Yeah, she she had been maintaining her body weight. Good. But uh, because we wanted her to go into this procedure in a in a healthy state. Yeah. You know, that brings to mind a patient that I had uh, a a long time ago, actually during my residency. So like a really long time ago. (laughs) And uh, it was an 18 year old cat that presented to me to the surgical service uh, with a tumor in an eye. And, you know, we, we had worked it up and we knew the tumor itself was relatively benign. In other words, just taking the eye out would handle the oncology problem that this cat was having but it's it's an 18 year old cat you know and and the owners are kind of humming and hawing and the blood work was fine and this was a beautiful cat and they decided you know we know she's 18 but let's just do it anyways right if we get six months be well it'll be well worth it Mm -hmm. and um so we took the cat's eye out. I have no idea what the anesthetic protocol was, but I'm sure it was wonderful. And the <laughs> cat went home and recovered. You know, I then went on to the University of Pennsylvania and came back on faculty at the University of Guelph. And I saw this same cat again, who was now 22 with a bladder tumor. Now at this point, and this was bladder tumor was significantly affecting this cat and she was euthanized at this point but you know we all think of 18 wow yeah, yes you know do, do time. we bother you know do we bother but yeah everything else looking good and owners being on board which you know as you say a, a good chat with the owners to find out exactly what the status truly is of the of the patient and and what they're willing to put into this as well so yes. yeah, I you know we were we're all taught age is not a disease, and I think your case and my case really bring that to light that age is not a disease. You know? Yeah, but but to be fair, I have to repeat that mantra to myself. You know, with your eighteen year old and my twenty year old, it's like, okay, this, this patient is old. This patient is old. Yeah, you know, there's. I just know that there's not, there's no wiggle room. You, there, there's no opportunity to slip up. You just have to be on your game. Yeah, and yeah. and I think, and as you say, speaking with the clients, I think the owners have to be willing to to invest. And I'm not just talking financially because you know, surgery, dental, anesthesia is costly. And like it or not, you had a 20 year old cat. Nobody's promising that this cat's going to get to 21. Right. Right. Uh, But the goal is that the cat goes home and does well. 
before whatever the demise is mm -hmm. going to be, right? Is that we at least have a, a successful procedure. Interesting cases. Well, thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that. Uh, it was my pleasure.